Going by the dynamics in an ever-changing business world, the need for organizations to equip and adopt in-depth technology or knowledge and insights in recognizing the patterns driving change in today's corporate world so as to fit into the 21st century workplace cannot be overemphasized. As diversity, equity, and inclusion are essential principles to the success of today's business environment, FITC, a world-class innovation-led and knowledge-driven institution, have continued to take the center stage in providing innovative and technology-driven programs aimed at developing and equipping individuals and organizations for business performance and growth. <clears throat> in the past four decades, FRTC has played pivotal roles in helping individuals and organizations deliver value by equipping them with innovative knowledge, solution to keep up an ever-growing business uh, development to the ever-growing business environment and, of course, to the business work workplace. Now, let's get more insight into this and how F F FRTC is playing a critical role and, of course, significant one in equipping organizations for the 21st century workplace. I'm being joined by the right person. And she's the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Institutions Training Center, FRTC, this is Chizo Malize. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you in the studio again. Thank you. Always good to be back. Yes, I think after COVID, pre-pandemic and all of that, technology is taking center stage. And uh, that's what we've seen mm -hmm. in organizations. Now, what's your take uh, about this development? How tech, the rise of technology will change the work environment? Thank you very much for having me again. Technology has totally changed the way that we live life today. It has changed the way that we work, the way we engage. It has also changed the way that products are designed. Mm. We have seen a lot of changes in new products that are predominantly technology-led, platforms also, and service delivery to clients that are technology-led. Technology within the workplace has also made it, uh, brought changes to the way we work, okay. what work is, and where work is done. So what work is today is not traditionally moving files from point A to B, mm -hmm. but being able to leverage technology to make resources and results and impact and outcome happen without even leaving a spot. Mm -hmm. It has also made significant impact to who does work. So technology means that so much that individuals can physically do today can actually be done by robots. Mm -hmm. Technology has also created opportunity where people are able to do much more through digitization, for instance. So you do not have to have information physical. You can have every single resources digitized, and you can have ease of access. And so pandemic, the COVID-19, has brought all of this to life because in organizations yeah. realize that they do not really have to be physical. A lot of people were very uh, unprepared yeah. prior to the pandemic mm. to take advantage of technology mm. and the tools around technology to deliver work. Yeah. And so with the pandemic, a good number of corporations, up to 80%, had lost so much traction because they were confused. While corporations and businesses shut down and needed time to recalibrate, many did not find their way. Unlike us in FITC, a technology-driven organization and innovation-led organization, we simply jumped into technology and started using platforms and systems and drive work remotely and ensuring that we meet the goals of the industry we serve, and that's the financial service sector. Interesting. The media, too, we didn't lag behind. We also took advantage of technology. I agree. Skype, Zoom, guests, and all of that. But what kind of skills mm -hmm. do you think organizations need really at this time? Okay, so one other thing technology has done is to change the kind of skill set required within course, organization. Course. And so I spoke about the digital revolution. Mm -hmm. The digital revolution is impacted through other means of doing things. We've seen robotics is very important now. Artificial intelligence is top burner. We've also seen machine learning, so you do not really need to be an individual one-on-one -on -one with in persons to be able to learn. We've also seen virtual reality where gaming is the important thing. So you can even learn through gaming without having an instructor-led approach to learning. And so 
within organizations, yes. there are so many skills that people should begin to think about. Mm. Digital skills are very critical. Analytical skills are very critical. And when I speak to digital skills, is to be able to leverage the technologies that are available to us to produce results today. Now, with regards to artificial intelligence and analytics, it means that you are able to gain data without really having to be on the field to gain insight, mm -hmm. without having to be walking around the streets and the sun to gain insight. You can, through analytics and through technology, get insights into your consumer need, what your consumer is doing, the expectations of your clients, and even internal customers, which are your staff. So organizations are right now challenged with ensuring that their team have this sort of skills because if they do not have these skills, it means that they are also not able to deliver to their marketplace. Mm. So these new skills means also that other people can do the work that some people can do. So it becomes <coughs> necessary for organizations to build their people, equip their people with all of these skills so that they can consistently meet the demands of the business. <coughs> I'm also concerned I want to know if organizations are trying, are they building the skills to meet up with this challenge? Some organizations are challenged themselves, so you can't also give what you do not have. True. So when we speak to digitization, it's not every organization that is digitized True. today, for instance. And remember what we said about the COVID-19 pandemic. So many organizations, you'll be amazed, had not even invested in the right technology tools. So you have only about 20% of staff who have opportunity and ability to use desktops and workstations, not to talk of laptops. So organizations, when they needed to become physical, who were struggling with investing <coughs> in laptops because they thought it was too much expenses to yeah. need, could not do anything because you can't f carry your physical desk stations to homes. So you see that the first starting point is that organizations must be equipped and be ready to embrace the technology changes true, true. and be digital themselves. True. Number one, organizations that are also very optimistic about being digital and have made the right investments must train and equip their people. So there are several sectors where 80% of the staff do not even touch laptops or desktops at all. So the biggest challenge is migrating your workforce to become technology savvy. And when they are technology savvy, then they can embrace and learn the digital skills. And those skills are really important today because when you think of the things that machines can do that human cannot do, then there's a threat even to employment because those individuals can become redundant just because they've not upskilled. So can we, can we actually get a degree or can we put it you know, the, what degree of skill gap is recorded with the dread of these relevant skills that we've just identified? Can we assess it? I think that it's high. It is really high, high in the sense, it is significantly high wow. in terms of what technology has done. So as technology is bringing new ways of work, there are people who do not make this commensurate investment in infrastructure and resources that are required, in training and equipping their people to learn to man machines, or even to learn the skills that are technology driven. So if you think about the number of organizations outside of the private sector, for instance, who are in the public sector still not embracing technology because of the sheer size of the capital assets in those area, in those uh, sort of sectors. Think also about the small and medium-sized businesses who begin to think it's huge investments to invest in technology. The scale is huge and the scale is high. But within the financial sector where we play, investment in technology is not the issue. It is building capability of the people to be able to live with this technology, run this technology, and create tools, create applications and also be able to use applications that are created. So when we speak about using insights and using data, yeah. people can today use Power BI, Azure and all of that to gain insights as well as artificial intelligence to gain insights so as to take decisions in the products that they design, in the channels through which they deliver customer to their customers and in the mode that they measure their customer engagement. But if these people do not have those skills, yeah. they would definitely not be able to meet the needs of the organization as well as the customer and the marketplace. One way or the other, this must have impacted organizations. And I'm also thinking, 
that do you think they are creating the organization are creating an environment for millennials to thrive you know to take advantage of all of this Visionary organizations are creating an environment for millennials to thrive. Great. And I say visionary because these are the organizations who understand that the millennials and mm. the Gen Zs own the future. And if you really want to prepare the, your workplace to be relevant into the future, you need to be able to also understand that the millennial and the Gen Z were born into technology. So they are not struggling for technology adoption. They are actually struggling to be in an environment where technology is highly used. And so organizations that want to be relevant today must ensure that they keep their millennial workforce as well as their Gen Z workforce optimistic, excited, remain agile by giving them the enabling environment. And that is an environment that innovation-driven and technology-led. So that's where the FITC comes in, the Financial Institutions Training Center. Mm -hmm. Very strategic. How can you help bridge this gap? And of course, add value. Okay, so we are doing that already, and I'll start by the kind of programs that we design. Post-COVID reality has thrown and made it obvious that technology embraced, we can't run away from that. Mm. So a lot of our content are built around technology, around innovation, even in the traditional programs that we deliver, such as risk compliance, technology programs are also worked in there, because every single thing around the world today is delivered through technology. And so in creating these very innovative programs, we are able to keep the industry, we are able to keep the people who work within the industry advanced, renewed in their knowledge, but most importantly, sophisticated in thinking. And another way that we have also done some significant work is we have developed programs that are very appealing to young people. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the future of work and how the work skills and the workplace has changed. Because the future of work is totally different and the workplace has changed, huh? people are requiring new skills. And the young people who are actually leaving schools, universities, and the academic environments are usually not adequately prepared for today's workplace. So the universities and the tertiary institutions on their own have also not invested in technology, you'd agree with me. So you find somebody who's graduated from the university, some of them only see computers from afar yeah. in the technology room and don't even touch them. So we developed our Future of Work Academy where we create something like a finishing school program for young people. So as they leave universities and between the youth service <coughs> period and when they are going into the workplace, through our Future of Work Academy, we're able to equip them, teach them the skills that are relevant, the digital skills that I spoke about, the use of office suits like the Microsoft application so that they are able to get into the workplace confident, we also teach them analytics. We teach them all of the things that will keep them ready to adopt into the new workplace. Another thing that is also very innovative that we've done, with great emphasis on the young people, is the way that we've created a continental program. And that's Africa Focus when I talk about pan uh, continent. The Youth Connect program is designed to bring young people together so that they can create technology and innovation learning and solution. Of course, as a, a key success factor for developing Africa. So we put the challenge of Africa development and growth into the hands of the youth. So when we talk about Youth Connect, and we talk about technology and innovation, we put them on hackathons, we put them on ideators, we put them in competition, and give them the enabling environment. And so leveraging technology and also being able to create new things, they are able to see Africa of the future, and they are able on their own to embrace technology, embrace innovation, and create great things. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really very interesting. Well, I was just thinking, how receptive are Nigerian youths to all of this? Are they really taking advantage of this? They are taking advantage of it. The, the great thing about what we do is, and this is beyond Nigeria, really. Yeah, of course. In all of our programs are continent-based because it is the same effort it takes for us to roll out, especially since being a technology-led organization, it is driven digitally. We never go to these countries one by one, but we usually have as much as 48 African countries get into our contest. And the very last one that we had, 
we had a minimum of we had regional winners and 10 winners from every region and, uh, uh, of africa and they are not only demonstrating their capability and love and passion for technology and innovation we also give them the opportunity to learn more so we partner with organizations like ibm to say for all of your winners across the whole of Africa, we're going to put them on another three months program of design thinking and more technology uh, experiences and exposure. So the young people are very curious, they get on it. The organizations that will adopt them after they've gone through these programs are great for it. They also, uh, within the financial service sector, we've got quite a lot of partners who are like, great things you are doing, we're happy to be on this one. But the real impact is with the growth <coughs> around the ideas that they come up with, the technology that they incubate, and the success of even the continent and the countries and the region, focusing on what they could do with technology and innovation. Interesting space that you play in the financial sector. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of the outlook with all that we face, even globally. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations? Uh, so I, I think that technology has totally changed of the course. landscape. Everybody yes. needs to hop on it. If you are out of the opportunities that technology creates, you would be out of a lot. The outlook is super positive, but there is need for collaborations between the workforce who would come in in terms of the young people who will be tomorrow's uh, future workforce, the people who are also within the workforce already who need to be de de developed much more because they will become future leaders. The organizations that need to absorb these individuals, and of course organizations like FITC providing the learning. So the partnership and collaborations that are happening at every level, local and international, we consistently add value and consistently expand the play. But we are excited about the way that technology and innovation are at the bane of the learnings that we infuse across the industries that we serve, recognizing <coughs> that the future of workplace and the work the workplace has changed, yeah. and the future of workplace is driven predominantly by technology. So equipping people to be able to fit into that workplace and be relevant, building future focused organization. We have a lot of work to do, and already that's on track. Thank you so much, uh, CEO and the managing director of financial. Institution Training Center, FITC, Mrs. Chizop Malizi. Hope to have you shortly to assess all of this and yeah. see how it's playing out. Impact assessment. Of We're course. happy to come back. All right, then. <laughs>